Tonight, our special transmission as Hamas refutes Israeli claims of renewed peace negotiations. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I'm Aisha Ashraf. Today is the 235th day since the onset of Israel's war. In the past 24 hours, over 200 Palestinians have been killed due to intense Israeli airstrikes in Gaza. Many have been injured. The most devastating attack targeted a camp in Rafah. Medical sources have confirmed the attack occurred near the logistics space of the United Nations Agency for Palestinian Refugees in Tal al-Sultan. The base was sheltering at least 100,000 displaced refugees. Eyewitnesses say several tents were hit with missiles and 2,000-pound bombs. The attack has killed at least 40 civilians. The Gaza Civil Defense Force says it has transported 50 victims, both dead and injured, from the site. Eyewitnesses describe scenes of chaos and devastation, with fire still raging in the aftermath. One displaced person, Majid al atar recounts losing five family members in the bombing. This assault on Tal al-Sultan camp is one of the deadliest since the conflict began. The attack comes despite a ruling by the International Court of Justice ordering Israel to halt its offensive in Rafah. Israeli forces have also bombed other shelters in Jebalia, Nusirat, and Gaza City. At least 160 Palestinians have been killed in these attacks. The attacks have drawn international condemnation. There are calls for a ceasefire from all parts of the world. The Israeli military acknowledges the casualties caused by the airstrikes. It is calling the loss of life collateral damage and has announced an investigation. The death toll from Israel's war is staggering. At the time of writing, at least 35,984 Palestinians have been killed. A revised report by the United Nations estimates another 10,000 civilians are buried under the rubble. 80,643 Palestinians have been injured. Israel's death toll from Hamas's attack stands at 1,139. Palestinian resistance group Hamas has launched a rocket attack on Tel Aviv. The attack marks the first assault in four months. The Qassam Brigades, the armed wing of the group, says Israeli assault against civilians is the motive behind the attack. Sirens blared across central Israel as rockets struck the coastal city. Despite a UN resolution urging a ceasefire, Israel's offensive on Gaza persists. Israeli attacks are causing widespread devastation and a dire humanitarian crisis. Hamas official Osama Hamdan has dismissed the need for fresh talks with Israel. Hamdan says Israeli troops need to withdraw from Gaza and end aggression so that peace talks can resume. Israel has refused several ceasefire proposals. However, it is insisting on renewing ceasefire negotiations. Israel seeks a temporary ceasefire. On the other hand, Hamas insists on a permanent end to hostilities. International pressure is mounting on Israel to end the war. Efforts to revive negotiations and reopen Gaza's border crossing continue. Domestic pressure in Israel is intensifying with demands of action on release of prisoners. Netanyahu's government is facing criticism for its failure to secure a deal. Israelis are doubting Netanyahu's commitment to peace. Many countries, including Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and Canada, have welcomed the ruling by the International Court of Justice. The ruling says Israel must immediately halt its military offensive on Rafah. The ruling also asks Israel to reopen the Rafah crossing. Canada's Deputy Prime Minister, Christia Freeland, says she expects all parties to follow international law. The European Union's Joseph Borrell says Europe has to choose between the rule of law or to support Israel. Many countries say they respect international law. The Council on American-Islamic Relations applauds the decision. It is calling on the Biden administration to honor the ruling. Despite this, Israel continues its assaults on Rafah. Far-right Israeli Finance Minister Betzalel Smotrich says Israel will not stop its war on Gaza. The University of Alberta's Arts Faculty Council has passed a vote of no confidence against President Bill Flanagan. The move comes after President Flanagan authorized the use of police force against student and faculty protesters. 
Flanagan's decision to clear a peaceful pro-Palestinian sit-in resulted in widespread condemnation. Despite attempts to justify his actions, Flanagan's leadership was heavily criticized during a recent meeting. His decision to use violence has sparked outrage among the university community. The faculty members say university presidents need to be defenders of the right of free expression. Calls for Flanagan's resignation have intensified. The General Faculty's Council is expected to address the issue soon. The Ontario Federation of Labour held a solidarity rally in support of student demonstrators today at the University of Toronto. The Federation represents one million workers in Ontario. It is the largest provincial labour federation in Canada. The rally comes after University of Toronto issued to clear the pro-Palestinian encampment by early morning today. The rally aims to defend the rights of students to protest. The Federation is urging the university administration to revoke its trespass order. The Federation has sent an open letter to the university president, Merrick Gertler. In the letter, the Federation's president, Laura Walton, says it is very important to have a dialogue. President Walton says there should be peaceful negotiation without police intervention. The rally advocated for the protection of the charter rights of freedom of expression and association. Thank you for watching. Our news is produced by Muslim Network TV, which is a not-for-profit organization. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or visit muslimnetwork.tv to donate now so we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.